Hello everyone, this will be a short video on gearing in case you want to import something from Gearotic. Let's give it a shot. I'm going to load a DXF from a shafting report. I added some gears to the Gearotic screen and created a shaft positions DXF from the DXF screen. As you can see, they're huge because I use millimeters in my uh, Gearotic. So we can select everything and just uh, shrink them down. And then select them and move them into our grid. All right, so now we have an imported, or we have imported two gears from Gearotic. But of course, they're not kinetic objects, and, and Gearotic only sees this as a collection of 22 chains. Incidentally, you'll notice what we import is, is up here on an unnamed layer, 22 chains. Because we have a, a simulator for each layer, make sure you're on that layer as a selected layer if you wish to play with the kinematics of these objects. All right, so let's turn on kinematics just to show how ridiculous that would be. You can see everything has its own origin. They're all over the place. They will collide, and if I push run, the system goes into a kind of collision chaos. All right, so we don't need that. Let's see what we can do about it. First of all, you can drag and select all the objects of the first gear, and then let's group them so the system knows that that is indeed an object. If I click it, they all select. That's uh, what you're going to need. Second gear, let's do the same thing. And let's group those, and they become their own object. Now, it's probably a good idea to turn off gravity. Most gears, we're going to assume, are evenly balanced. They don't have a pivot gravity to them. Uh, so we'll turn off pivot gravity over here with response to gravity on pivot. We'll uncheck it and say update all. And now neither object will be affected by a pivot gravity. One other thing that we should probably do is uh, decimate them. When we bring in a gear from Gearotic, it's got a lot of points. It could have thousands of points around that circle. And that makes it very difficult for you to create two objects which will not slow down your system terribly. So let's decimate those. We select them all. We hit decimate all. And OK. Now the objects are a little bit rougher now. You can see that they're not as pristine. You could use a lower um, collision tolerance, but my thought is we have the original DXFs for cutting purposes. We're gonna use these sim for simulation purposes, so it doesn't really matter if we've chopped them down somewhat. If I now go into kinematics and hit play, um, they sit there as we'd expect because there's no gravity, but if I pull one, and rotate it, you can see that the other gear turns. Now this is being done because of collisions. They're sensing the collisions between teeth and pushing each other. And this will work for many objects that you want to design, but it's not a very efficient way of doing it. And if you had wanted to keep the maximum resolution, you could uh, if we set a ratio rule instead of simply allowing the collisions on this object to happen. So in order to do that, let's stop the uh, simulation and select both gears. And you can see we have a ratio button over here at the last. It's a picture of two gears. If we hit it, we'll hear that it has applied a uh, limitation to the system. And you can see that we get two half blue uh, toothed objects. Uh, motor is red, a blue one is a ratio. So these are now locked by ratio. That doesn't mean they're the right ratio, of course. So let's hit stop and play and um, see what happens. And as it turns out, it doesn't appear anything's happening. I don't know what ratio we have selected, so let's take a look. We select both objects, hit the ratio button, and it'll tell us that the ratio is actually 0.238144 to 1. Um, what should the ratio be? Well. To know that, you, you from Gearotic, Gearotic would tell you the ratio, or you can simply count the number of teeth on one and divide into the number of teeth on the other. So in the case of these two gears, I've got an 18 tooth and a 14 tooth, so that would give me a ratio of about 1.2857 or so. So I'm going to select both gears, hit the ratio button, and as you can see, I entered it here while I figured it out. Uh, it's minus 1.825. Now, I have to have the minus because we know that one gear is going to rotate opposite to the other gear. So once we've set those numbers up, uh, we can hit stop and run. And of course, nothing happens because although we've set a ratio, we haven't really told it to do anything. If I grab one gear and rotate it, however, you can see that it does make the other gear start to rotate. However, uh, these gears have a mass that I don't seem to be over able to overcome between them and small micro collisions that are happening here. So the best way to do that is to add a motor to one of the gears. So let's 
Just hit stop and add a motor. And on that motor, we'll give it about 400 Newton meters of force. And let's give it an RPM of 60 RPM as an example. We hit stop and then we hit run. And there you have two gears running um, in a much more efficient way CPU wise than before when we relied on collisions and gravity to do it. But the last thing we should do if we attach two gears this way is to make sure they don't collide because these areas when the gears come together, if they do touch, it does cause a problem uh, which slows down your physics engine and uh, it's just more efficient to have them not colliding so my advice is to select the both of them uh, change them to a collision group of one and update them and now you won't have to worry about uh, the collisions causing problems for you uh, we can hit start and they can go and so that's the way I would recommend doing gears import the DXFs uh, convert them to the same object group type so they no longer collide and add a ratio between them. How you drive them could be other gears down the line or whatever, but this is a much better way of driving your gears. You'll know that they'll stay in sync and so on and so forth. All right, so that's it with how to uh, deal with gear objects. If you, you can attach a gearing ratio between any two objects, they don't have to be touching. They can be far apart so that you can simulate chains and so on and so forth. Um, and take note of your icons. The red is a gear and the blue means that you have a ratio attached. All right, that's all you really need to know on uh, attaching gear ratios. Have fun.